Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining into our webinar. And it is on Self-Funding 101. We have Gino Gambardello here to, to talk about the product. And we're going to get started very quickly. Um, but I wanted to at least first start for the, the new attendees um, to give a little bit of the lay of the land. Uh, my name is Deb Wilkinson, and I'm the Vice President of the Health Plan Options Department here at URL Insurance Group. My duties include the oversight of the individual and group health markets. And, um, you know, we have staff here to support you, and that's, that's you know, really our, our, our um, call to glory, if you will. We, we, we are service-driven. Um, you know, we work hard for your clients, and, um, you know, we're really proud of, of the job that we do here. Um, we're not the only department here. If you go to our website, which is urlinsgroup.com, you'll see a long list of our, our departments. We have our Annuity Solutions Department, which is headed up by Joe Corio. He is our Senior VP as well. Um, and the annuity, the annuity Department has really gained some traction even in these um, these times with the low interest rates. And um, if you've not done them, if you're working in the senior market, annuities go hand in hand with the senior market. So I would encourage you to reach out to Joe Corio and learn uh, about the products and how you can sell them. Uh, of course, the Employee Benefits Department, which is headed up by um, Sam Bohr. And uh, this, this complements, these products complement all of our group health products. Uh, such as group gap, group disability, short term, long term, et cetera. Um, we also have some payroll components in there as well, as well as a private enrollment and HR portal. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about that, reach out to Sam. Health Plan Options, this is my department. Uh, group Health Resources is a visited, well visited page, and that goes through all of our carriers and gives information on how to quote how to submit, and how to make changes, no matter the group size. size. Uh, Life Markets is run by Steve Clemens. And uh, again, long-term care, uh, the final expense market, these go hand in hand, certainly with the senior market as well. Uh, so learn more about some of the exciting things that Steve has going on, such as new lead programs and uh, uh, over the phone um, submission of life products. So again, very a lot going on in the life markets, Medicare offerings. A lot of you on the, the call today that work in the health market also work in the Medicare offerings uh, or the Medicare segment. Uh, this department is head up, headed up by Christy Wilbert and Karen McDaniel. And uh, of course, open enrollment just ended for them and uh, a lot of opportunity in the Medicare department. So in a nutshell, those are, those are our departments. I encourage you to go to our site and check it out. Also our Gemini program. For those of you that are not familiar, this is a program that we started last year in 2016. And it really benefits um, and rewards the agent partners that choose to do all of their business, all lines of their business with URL. So visit our site. Take a look. If you have questions, reach out to us. Uh, we're always happy to help. And, uh, you know, again, if, if uh, you have questions um, or need information, just reach out to us. One last thing is our upcoming training and events. Of course, you can see that this is today's webinar. You could have registered here. Weekly, I run uh, a health insurance reform webinar. I've been doing this for since, since uh, the end of 2013, believe it or not. We run them weekly. They are 9.30 every Thursday. And of course, with all of the upcoming changes with the new administration, we're going to keep you informed of all of those changes just as we have from the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. So if you've not joined into our weekly webinars, I encourage you to do that as well and to check out our other training and events. So enough of the URL commercial. I'm now going to turn it over to Gino. Um, Gino has been in the business for seven years. Again, he is our sales consultant for Trustmark. He is local to Pennsylvania, which makes it awesome because he offers very strong agent support. Uh, so if you have questions on his products, et cetera, 
um, you know, he's, he's a phone call away and he helps you get these groups secured. So without further ado, um, I will hand it over to Gino. And Gino, thanks so much for doing this. Okay, thank you, Deb. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar today. I uh, appreciate your time. And hopefully this uh, shouldn't take more than about a half hour um, to run through. So here we go. Um, I'm sure many of you heard of Starmark. We have two basic products. One's called Healthy Incentive. The other is called Healthy Edge. They're both, of course, self-funded product. Uh, we introduced that product probably uh, around 19, uh, let's see, uh, 2000 probably, 2000 and uh, maybe five or six. So um, with that said, if you take a look at Trustmark, Starmark at, at large, we, uh, Starmark, have been around since 1985. So way, over 30 years, we've been doing uh, insurance for small groups. Um, we uh, we specialize in this because we're we're nimble, we're small, so we can do things that a lot of the bigger guys couldn't do in terms of adapting to the market. So we launched a self-funded plan, probably like I said, around uh, probably eight years ago or so. Uh, Trustmark companies, which is you know our parent company, they uh, they've been around for over a hundred years, and they uh, they've been doing this. Uh, quite well for a long time. They have over 2 million covered lives uh, in their plans, and they all are also a A-minus rated company by AM Best, which means financially they're very sound, uh, and uh, they are also the, uh, the company that does our stop-loss insurance for our product, and we'll get more into that uh, as we go forward. Um, many of you may or may not be familiar with how self-funded works. I'm sure all of you probably have some exposure or have heard or are somewhat familiar with the product. But by the end of this presentation, hopefully uh, you have a much better insight and, uh, and we hope that you can launch maybe some new opportunities for yourself to help grow your business with this product. So um, moving forward then, our Healthy Incentives and Healthy Edge product is a self-funded product. Basically, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a plan that we can do you know, a variety of plan designs. There's only one monthly premium to pay, just like a regular insurance product. Um, you have an opportunity to get some kind of, of rebate or refund on any surplus uh, dollars that may be in the account, which I'll get into a little bit later. And there's a lot of uh, transparency in terms of how the dollars are spent. We have different reports that we send out to the groups, and it shows them uh, a whole variety of different things that's useful to the company to manage their business. So um, as I said earlier, there's all kinds of flexibilities with these things. We uh, First thing to note is we are basically a PPO platform only. We do not offer an HMO platform, but typically our PPO platform is oftentimes very competitive against uh, the HMO platforms that are pretty much used out there these days. We can do HRAs, we can do um, all kinds of different plan designs from the lowest bronze minimum value plan to a platinum plans and everything in between. So we can s truly you know, customize plan designs for you folks as I know a lot of the brokers today are kind of frustrated with some of the limitations in these template plan designs that they see uh, these days and you know what they're showing their groups. There's a lot of frustration there. So uh, to get into more of the features of, the, of these plans, we can do from 5 to 120 uh, uh, lives uh, for the Aetna and the Cigna networks. That's the two major networks that we use. Uh, for groups from 120 to 199, we um, have to use the Cigna network because Aetna, the Aetna folks limit us to uh, no more than around 120 lives for our, our particular for their network uh, plan. Um, the group size can be as low as five enrolled. Um, so that really enables even the smallest of groups to join this kind of a, of a plan and help them save money. It used to be 10. We rolled that back down to five back in the last January 1st of last year, I believe it was. So again, there are multiple options in terms of deductibles, out-of-pocket limits. It's a PPO plan design uh, option only. And of course, it has in-network and out-of-network features. We can do dual plan designs. Uh, we can do a calendar year, plan year type benefit um, as far as the deductibles go. And we have all kinds of various uh, copays and ER copays uh, that we can select as part of the you know plan variations for your particular client. So the way in this plan works in a nutshell, again, um, for those of you that are not familiar with self-funded and the mechanics of it, this should help. So uh, to start, the, the premium that a, a group 
pays is broken into three parts. Uh, the first part of that would be the stop loss premium. The second would be the admin and sales expense. And then the third would be the claim prefunding. So the third item, which is the claim prefunding, is the actual amount of dollars that we take from the premium, put it into a designated bank account, and we use those funds to actually pay the incoming claims. So for all intents and purposes, what the group uh, pays this one premium, and to them it just looks and feels like a regular insurance product. All this stuff in terms of the mechanics goes on, of course, behind the scene and just uh, how the plan is executed and implemented. Um, so once uh, a group uh, goes through their plan and we're, we're taking uh, claim dollars to, to pay for the claims, um, you know, that process goes on continuously. And then if the amount of claim dollars that are coming in um, exceed the amount that's, that's been funded, then stop loss insurance kicks in. And this is where, you know, the liability of the group is virtually zero because uh, the only liability is the actual premium, which of course is the same for regular insurance as well. So there is no, there's no downside risk. It's only basically the upside the benefit, which is any funds that are left over in those claim dollars uh, that we haven't we haven't used to pay for claims, they can be used as part of a rebate uh, depending on the option that we select for the design of the plan. And there's various options, but but the bottom line is there's some, the excess dollars can be used to either credit to our renewal or they can be just simply given back to the group. So here's uh, to give you more details as to how this thing actually works. This is a typical plan design. It's, I, I tried to keep it simple. So this is an HSA qualified plan with a $2,500 deductible, 70% coinsurance, and an out-of-pocket limit of 5000 So for those of you familiar, of course, with group uh, health insurance, uh, an HSA qualified plan basically is a plan where everything goes to deductible and coinsurance, and then once the deductible is, is, is met, then all the employee pays for is medical services and prescriptions is the coinsurance. So that's what this plan is, is about uh, for this example. Um, and to, to break this down into detail, so here we have a, a monthly rate uh, in item one here of $21,896. So that's the actual premium per month. If you take that premium and you break it down into those three elements we talked about earlier, you can see that the stop loss premium portion of this, and this is the portion that enables the stop loss uh, insurance. So this is the portion where if the group exceeds, if the claims exceed the amount of dollars collected from the premium, then that insurance kicks in. So that's just a protection for the plan. Uh, the next item is the administrative fees. And this is basically just the, you know, the administrative cost to administer the plan, you know, and all its uh, uh, various uh, activities. So that's, the, again, a fixed cost. And then the claim prefunding, this is the actual amount of dollars that we take from the plan every month and then put it aside into that bank account to pay for the expected claims. If you take that number of 7,300 and multiply it times 12, you come down here, this gives you what we call an aggregate attachment point. So this is the annualized value of where the stop loss insurance kicks in. So this is the maximum claim liability for the, for the group in terms of what, they're, what we're extracting from their premium to pay for claims. If the claims spike above this amount, then again, stop loss insurance kicks in and there's no, you know, there's nothing uh, for the group to do uh, other than just, you know, sit back and enjoy the plan just as if it were a regular traditional plan. The specific deductible, this is the amount where, um, this is a limit to where any one particular covered person's claims can be paid from. So basically, no one person can reduce the actual claims bucket this number right here of 88,000, no one person can reduce that by more than 20,000. So what that means is if you have a really serious spike claim, that one person is going to deplete no more than 20,000 and then stop loss insurance would kick in for that person above 20,000. So again, that leaves more of the claim dollars available for the rest of the group and more importantly, it also you know, leaves more of, the, of, of those claim dollars available for a potential rebate or refund depending on what option was chosen there. So when you folks ask uh, um, URL for quotes, uh, you typically would get uh, you know, a variety of plan designs. This is a summary of what a plan design or quote would look like. This particular 
page is the cover page, and this shows basically four designs. So in any one proposal, you know, URL through you know your inputs and you know what the renewals are looking like, we can show the group, um, you know, up to four plan designs per proposal, and this is a summary of what they look like. You can see here they're pretty detailed, you know, from the deductible to the coinsurance to the max out-of-pocket amounts, you know, to the total monthly cost um, and annual. Uh, uh, annual cost as well. So you can see the, the variety. And again, because of all the variability in the plan designs that we can have, you know, there could be hundreds and hundreds of variations, but we can do four at a time. And typically that's more than enough for, for, for to compete or to show comparable plans to an incumbent uh, carrier and some alternatives as well to save money. If you break down each quote uh, proposal, um, you go from that summary page, and then from there you go into the benefit summaries for each one of those plan designs. And I won't, I won't, you know, belabor the point, but you can see here. Then it gets into more details as to what's covered, how it's covered, and so forth and so on. So that's the benefit summary, and from there it gets into basically more of a summary of the stop loss limits. Uh, here, where you can see for this particular case on the first plan, uh, this has uh, an example uh, of a specific deductible of twenty-five thousand, and the annual aggregate attachment point here is one hundred and five thousand. Again, that is the number where uh, beyond which the stop loss insurance kicks in, and the twenty-five thousand again is, as mentioned uh, earlier, that's the the amount that no one person can exceed before the specific stop loss insurance kicks in. So and these are the, some of the parameters. This particular option is what's known as a cash surplus. So remember I mentioned that um, the, the, the surplus of dollars that may remain in the claims bucket. Um, we have different options to return that to the group. This one happens to be the 100% cash surplus, which means that whatever's left, we would give them back 100% of that in the 16th month of the plan and uh, minus any terminal liability, which is, which is just a technical uh, point, which means basically there's some, there's some dollars we might hold back because we're giving the group a, a rebate or a refund so early and there still could be claims coming in. We could hold some dollars back just to cover those potential claims um, that might be coming in. And if they do come in and they're more than what we expected, then it's all on us. We don't, we don't go, we do not go back to the group to ask for more money. You know, we just, we do rebate the money as designated in that 16th month period, and there's no, there's no other adjustments made to that. So um, some of this may sound a little bit um, uh, cumbersome, uh, but but as you walk through and talk to URL and their team about some of these plans or, you know, through me um, in terms of specific clients that you might have uh, and working proposals for, you know, we can certainly, you know, go through these details, you know, more vigorously. And, and I'm sure, you know, it's only a matter of a couple of quotes before you get really familiar with how these things work. So. And again, this is another breakdown. This actually shows the breakdown in a different way. Again, it's the monthly premium is 23000 And this one shows the actual monthly cost by tier. We only still have the four tiers, the employee only, employee spouse, employee child, and family. And that's a, another basically blessing and relief to a lot of groups because most groups just cannot, you know, they don't like the age band age banded rates where every age is different rates and here we have simply the four rates again this makes it a lot easier for groups to figure out their contributions and all that stuff so and this just breaks it down uh, for every tier in terms of the actual cost uh, the stop loss cost for each employee uh, the ag the ag premium and the admin fees and then uh, the claim prefund dollars and, and whatnot for a particular group. So it breaks it down all kinds of different which ways. Again, this is not really important for the group to understand in detail, but of course it is for the broker, so you know they can communicate you know you know some of these features to the to the group uh, in a in a reasonable fashion. Um, the way, um, of course, the way the self-funding product works is you know it gives the groups the ability to get. Uh, you know, top-notch insurance uh, at a, a reasonable cost based on the merits of their health status. And that's where, you know, that's what enables these kinds of self-funded plans to work for small groups. And to do that, you know, the employees have to complete a medical questionnaire. And I think we're probably the leader in, in how we can basically facilitate this process and make it very easy for the groups to do this. We have two ways of doing uh, the medical questionnaire, and we call this pro platform Express Connect. One way is uh, one of the options on Express Connect is simply for the group's employees to call in 
uh, and answer a few medical questions, and the other is to simply do it online. What I like to do typically when we set up groups to do this process, I like to offer them the option so they can to both, I like to offer them both options so they can, you know, there might be some employees that rather just go online and do it at their leisure at home, and there might be a few people that may want to call in. So both options we can set up, and the employer uh, can choose uh, whichever way they prefer. It, and for any of you that you know are uh, familiar with the underwriting process in terms of collecting paper applications, you know and probably can identify with how cumbersome and arduous that task is. is. But with our uh, method, it's pretty simple. Uh, we uh, we send update reports to you and the group every day to show the progress and, and how it's coming along. So it's totally hands off. And then once the process is completed, then we proceed to do the underwriting. And it's uh, pretty quick. It usually takes about 24 to 48 hours to get an actual final rate for the group. So why do you want to choose uh, Starmark? Again, uh, our history and our experience, uh, you know, is uh, speaks for itself. Um, we we have a lot of different uh, flexible plan designs that we can provide for you. We have an excellent reputation in terms of processing claims and turnaround time. Uh, with Express Connect, as I just mentioned, it becomes a very easy process to actually do the medical questionnaires to get you know those rates, assuming the, the group is relatively healthy. Um, you know, again, Trustmark uh, over 100 years, Starmark over 25 years of experience, and again, we are AM uh, minus rated, and that's an excellent rating uh, by AM Best. So to talk a little bit about the marketing aspects of this product, I mean, there's a certain kinds of groups and uh, group uh, personalities, if you will, that that are more amenable to, to these kinds of, of products, and they are included here. So these kinds of groups, finance, accounting, technology, especially technology and IT, and I won't read the rest of these, but these are typically groups that um, have uh, perhaps a, a younger demographic, and because of that, uh, the likelihood of the medical questionnaire outcome, uh, you know, would fare better is, is, is higher than, for, for example, uh, a trucking industry or somebody working in a steel mill where they tend to be higher older age blue collar workers. So again, this is a, a good target format for those of you that are interested and, and know or have the uh, resources to uh, to you know generate uh, groups by these kind of uh, activities. Uh, if you wanted to target some new business, these could be good areas to go after. Um, so one of the other things that we're going to talk about here is basically we have uh, uh, if you've been following the news lately, one of the uh, one of the things that has been coming up, of course, is the replace and repeal or repeal and replace the Obamacare. And one of the things, a common element in those talks, has always been uh, using HSAs uh, to help uh, drive this change. And an HSA, of course, is a, a health savings account type of plan. And there are there are some there's definitely benefits to that. There's also some drawbacks that groups don't like, and I'd like to address that those particular issues with you as maybe uh, something to think about, food for thought, and, and maybe presenting some new ways to get uh, new business and generate some more opportunities for yourself. So we'll talk about that in more detail here in a few slides. And the other one is we also have MAC plans. So that's a minimum essential coverage. A MEC plan is really not a minimum value plan. It's actually uh, not even, um, uh, it's not really a viable plan in terms of me meeting the uh, Affordable Care Act requirements, but it is a way that a group of uh, over 50 large group can mitigate uh, their penalties by offering a MEC plan. And again, that's something that, you know, if you want to get into more details with or have some potential clients that are in that predicament where they have a lot of lower paying employees, employees that, you know, that can't afford a plan or, or the employer cannot, uh, does not want to contribute what's necessary for um, the minimum value plan, then if you talk to Deb and her team or myself, I can walk you through some of those scenarios and how these kinds of plans can help groups mitigate their penalties. So here's um, here's what I was referring to before. Um, an HDHP with an HRA. So if you have if you have an HSA qualified plan, also known in the, as an HDHP plan, typically you're providing uh, a group with the insurance with a with an insurance plan where the employee has to pay a deductible first before any benefits kick in, and that can be problematic for the group because a lot of groups, 
you know, don't want their employees to be stuck with any kind of fees up front. It becomes, I guess, a psychological barrier because if you know you have a $2,000 deductible and you're starting to feel sick, you're more, you're more dissuaded not to go see a doctor because you realize you have to pay, you know, that first 2000 for any kind of medical services, so you, you tend to avoid that. That's the downside of having an HDHP or an HSA plan. Albeit that, as I mentioned, you know, Congress is looking at these now as one of the anchors for uh, part of the repeal mechanism for the Affordable Care Act to make these more popular, perhaps increasing the amount that you can contribute to an HSA. Nevertheless, what this is about now is if you couple an HSA plan or an HDHP plan with an HRA, which stands for Health Reimbursement Account, what this does is basically you can, you can turn um, a gold or platinum plan with an HSA plan with much lower premiums. And the reason why you can do that is because with this kind of a plan, um, you're actually, the plan is only uh, priced out at a high deductible. But because there's an HRA, you can reimburse that deductible back to the employees, which in effect, you're only usual, utilizing that risk as it comes up. So that potentially could afford you a a huge savings and also keep your employees happy. So I'll show you how this can work for your particular group. Um, and, uh, um, and, and by the way, the way people fund HRA, they can do it two ways. An employer can do an advanced HRA where, for example, you know, they have, let's say, a $2,000 deductible. Uh, they're going to fund the thousand, they're going to fund a thousand dollars of that. They can actually decide to do it upfront and fund the first thousand, or they can do it uh, on the back end uh, after the employee funds the first thousand, or they can split it on uh, that third option, which is a shared HRA. Right. So they can do it different ways. It doesn't really matter, but ultimately, this provides the the silver bullet for making these HSA plans more palatable, and at the same time getting groups to understand how valuable they really could be, especially in light of what's happening in Congress where these things are going to get a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, press and uh, notoriety as we move forward. So with that said, um, if you do have a, a high deductible plan, here's an example of a plan. Uh, this here um, on the top of the quadrant of, of the plan is a typical uh, regular standard plan. It's thousand dollar deductible, hundred percent coinsurance. It's a really rich plan. The monthly cost in this plan is twelve thousand eight hundred sixty four dollars. So if you were to take this plan, right, and say, well, that's a lot of money, and uh, you know, but I I don't want to do an HRA or a high deductible HSA plan because I don't want the employees to pay two thousand dollars up front before anything kicks in. So on the right, you see here we have an HSA qualified plan with a $2,000 deductible and 100% coinsurance. So now, um, if you take a look at price, the price of plan one versus the price of the HSA plan, there's quite a difference. On an annual basis, it's $154,000 versus uh, 64, or 84,000. That's quite a difference. So, so what makes this work? If you, if you have an HRA and you assume that we're going to, the employer is going to reimburse the entire 2000 for an individual's deductible and the entire 4000 for the family deductible. What you have here then is a total, a total liability or a total extra liability on an annualized basis of $40,000 extra that the group employer potentially, and I, and I emphasize the word potentially, might have to pay out. So keep that number in mind, so 40000 If you go to the graph below, um, here's what this is telling us. Typically, an HRA reimbursement amount does not really exceed more than 35 to 50 percent of what the group actually is committing to. So, of that $40,000, the likelihood that the group is going to have to reimburse that entire $40,000 to the group is virtually zero. Um, so, so what this chart shows then on the left is it shows what the actual savings would be going with this high deductible plan versus the standard plan at the different HRA utilizations. So at 10%, you can see there's still a significant savings of 42% over the standard plan. You know, even at 40%, there's still a savings of, of, of 53,000 or 34%. Uh, on that particular utilization, and at 50%, there's still a savings of 45000 And for this particular design, even if the group went up to 100%, even if the group had to reimburse all those dollars, they would still be saving $49,000 with this plan. So this is an actual uh, plan that um, was presented to a group that we won, and the owner of the company was simply uh, just uh, you know, bedazzled with this particular 
you know, the way this worked and very, very pleased with the outcome. So this is uh, something we can do for you if you have any potential customers, especially going into 2017 where they're starting to ask you about HSAs and we don't like HSAs. Now you can talk about a possible solution for them and an analysis they could, uh, that, they, that they can understand that that might may, may make the whole thing more palatable for them. So keep that in mind as you go forward um, into the new year here. <laughs> These are the MAC plans. You know, we do have uh, basically, uh, as I mentioned before, we do have MAC plans. They come, uh, there's, you know, we can do them as a standalone now, or we can do them coupled with a, a standard minimum value plan. Um, so either way, we can provide those quotes. And a MAC plan is typically preventive care only, um, but there, uh, there's three different levels. We can do a standard MAC plan, which is basically just preventive care. Then we can do a package one buy-up, which includes generic, uh, generic. Uh, Rx card and also includes um, three physician visits, and then we can do a third buy-up, which is basically um, the same as the first, the second one, but also offers a one-time ER visit at $150 copay. So they're they're the MEC plans again, um, not really uh, something that you sell as a standalone, but sometimes a group um, you know wants to do that, and we can certainly offer a MEC plan for them, and again that would help them certainly mitigate any. Uh, uh, Affordable Care Act penalties that they may otherwise have to incur, and uh, Deb and her team uh, can certainly, you know, talk through some of that with you if you like. Again, here's some more information on preventive player. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, preventive plus, which is our, our our MAC plan name is called Preventive Plus. Again, we can do uh, standalone, or we can do it in combination with uh, our standard plan. If you do a combination where we're doing a MAC plan and a and a regular plan then you, you, you have to continue both of them until renewal. You just We can't drop one or the other and keep the other one intact um, if you do them as a dual type plan option. So this is a simple uh, one page kind of summary of what it takes to um, from quote to actually issuing a group. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, many of you are probably familiar with this. You go to URL, you provide them a census and the current plan designs and, and renewals. Um, and then we start working that from there. Uh, basically, um, within 24 to 48 hours, you typically would get a response from URL. Um, and uh, once you once you review or uh, take a look at the quote and decide that you want to move ahead with the group for the next phase, which is the medical underwriting, again, as I mentioned earlier, Step two would be simply be to tell us how you want to do it, either online or by phone. We set those up. And there is a third option, which is a paper option. We typically don't do that, um, as I mentioned before, because it is very cumbersome. Um, but there are some groups, for example, um, if you do have, I mentioned the trucking industry, the blue collar workers, typically they're, they're on the road. They're not really going to a particular office. They may not even know how to use a computer. So we, we do make uh, paper apps available for those kinds of groups, but it is very challenging to collect all those apps properly to make sure they're completed correctly. Uh, so it, is become, it does become a back and forth process that, you know, if we can avoid through these other two methods, it's highly recommended we do that. And then after uh, after we get those uh, that process uh, of underwriting completed, um, and the, the group still likes the the final rates or the underwritten rates, then we just complete an employer app. We do uh, we need a copy of a prior carrier bill, a couple other uh, documents, and then the group gets issued. And typically that takes about a couple of days as well. So it's not long at all until um, we get to that. Uh, final step there, which is what I just referred to. Um, after we do the employer app, and everything's processed, and given one last look over, we send out an awful letter. Once the group signs it, we uh, issue a, a group number, typically that same day or within 24 hours. So that's the process. You know, From the time the group decides to do the medical questionnaire to the time um, we actually issue a group number, it, it does really depend on how quickly the group can complete the apps, but assuming they do it quickly, um, you know, if they do it all within a couple of days, then we can go from the actual application process to issue within a, in a week's time. But again, it's all driven and gated by how quick the group can respond. And certainly, you know, the smaller the group, the quicker they can do that. The larger the group, the more time it might take to do that. This is what a, a sample ID card uh, might look like uh, from us. You can see the Starmark logo 
Uh, here is CVS, CVS Caremark logo. There's also, um, depending on the provider, it could be Aetna or Cigna, you'll see their logo on there as well. Uh, so it looks like a, just a typical, regular um, uh, medical uh, ID card. So with that said, I, that wraps it up for me. Um, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free. Uh, I think we're going to open it, open it up at this time. Right, Deb? We are, and it looks like we have quite a few questions. Okay. So Austin asks, um, no accounts over 199, correct? Um, great question. Um, typically, um, the answer is really no to that technically. Um, the reason why I, we peg it at, at about 199 is because only once, as, as the group gets larger and beyond that, it becomes kind of difficult just to manage the process. So if you have a group of 400, for example, you know, and let's say half of those folks want to be enrolled, but we, so that's fine, but we still also have to track down and get the other 100 to actually uh, waive. So just collecting all those waivers, even though this, that they're not medical questionnaires, we need the people that are not enrolling to actually register a waiver. And just to keep after all those you know, dozens and dozens of people can become cumbersome. So technically or theoretically, we can go above 100 or 200. But in reality, once you go above 200, it just becomes a little bit difficult to manage. Right. And um, also, just a reminder, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the webinar, this is being recorded, so everyone that registered, whether you're attending now or not, will get a recorded version of this webinar. And some other questions. Kim asks, um, well, she states about, you, you answered the question, is there a specific group that this would be a great fit for? And she said, example, young, healthy employees. and um, yes, you answered that. Okay. Um, and some of these, some of these um, industries as well. Yes, we uh, we've had just to elaborate a little bit on that. that um, one of the most successful group types that we've had are IT companies. Um, these are these are companies, and in South, in South Jersey and southeastern Pennsylvania, they seem to be uh, there seem to be a lot of. Um, um, Indian-based companies, where you know they 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 start these companies, they're really technology-driven, and they're all relatively young and healthy. So we've had right. amazing success with those kinds of groups. So uh, and the the also the other reason why we've been very successful with those groups is because typically you know they may be headquartered in Harrisburg or Philadelphia, but because they're a nationwide consulting firm, they they would hire individuals just to work out of their home in different parts of the country. So with that kind of demographic and geographic disbursement of employees, a lot of carriers, I think, uh, at least used to, they wanted at least half of the employees to be centralized at one location. For us, we don't really care. I mean, technically, if the group is actually has one employee, and that might be the owner in Pennsylvania, and he's got 50 other employees that work out of their house supporting their marketplace, we can write that group. And that's a great niche for us. So keep that in mind as well. We do that very well. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, competing. And a lot of times, some of the areas where these groups are, or these employees are, since we base our rates on the work location zip code, there are some of these uh, folks, like the, for example, the ones that are based out, down in the southeast where the rates are lower, uh, some sections of the, of, the, of the central US where the rates are lower. So typically, when we have this disbursement, you oftentimes see the rates being a lot lower where these people are, are, are are, are, are scattered throughout the country versus everybody, for example, just being headquartered in Philadelphia or, or Cherry Hill, New Jersey. So keep that in mind as well. Sometimes, you know, these kinds of plans, um, not only can we do them, they also oftentimes work out to our cost benefit advantage as well for us and for the group. Okay. Um, Nancy asks, what reporting is provided with a self-funded plan? <clears throat> Okay, great question. So the, the most uh, probably popular report that groups uh, always ask about, um, and brokers as well, and these are all available online uh, by the group or by the broker, uh, typically and they're, they're the aggregate attachment point um, uh, monthly summary. So what this thing does is because these groups uh, basically have this very unique and, and positive type of plan where you know they're, we're accum accumulating dollars on the inside and then we're spending dollars on claims on the outside. So every month a group would like to know, wow, I wonder how I'm doing. So they look at that report, they can see how much money they were, that we spent uh, in claims and how much money is being accumulated in the bucket 
in the claims bucket. And of course, that difference, if it's positive, goes back to the group somehow, either, either as a credit toward the renewal or as an actual rebate, depending on the option we choose. So that's the most popular report they ask about and the one probably they care about the most. And then the other report that we also, um, that's also available to them, I think it's available, I think three or four times a year, is basically a, a utilization report by diagnostics or by service. So you can actually see where their claim dollars, how they're being spent for that group in terms of, you know, in that medical landscape of services. We can of course, give any detail uh, or specifics about any, about any individual, but at, at a larger scale, based on services performed like x-rays or diagnostic types of, uh, of analysis, we can provide that information back to the group as well. Okay. And Joe asks, if we have an employee with two or more children but no spouse, will they be employee child or family? Uh, they actually would be employee child. Yeah, they would be considered an employee child, employee child rate. Yep. And um, Tom asks about the commissions, and I can say, Tom, that it is a percentage of the premium, and it, it, it can be tweaked. You can lower your comp, which would lower the rate. So typically, would you agree about 10%, maybe a little bit more, um, Gino? And then if the group rates come back, high, we can tweak that a bit and, and lower the rates by reducing compensation? Yeah, that, that's, that sounds, that sounds uh, right. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of flexibility in the commission, like Deb just alluded to. So, um, you know, sometimes uh, because our rates could be so much better than the competition, you know, we'll know that when we do the base rates, you know, we can, you know, Deb and I can always review and, and, and change the rates accordingly. And, and by the other side of the coin, if we're in a very competitive situation and, uh, the, you know, you guys may not be the broker of record, but you want to be the broker of record, you want, you want to win business, you know, we could also make some adjustments on the downside to maybe just tweak that commission just to help win the case for you. So right. it works, right. works both ways. <laughs> sure does. Um, Ann asks about group lead programs. Does Trustmark, Starmark offer these lead programs? Yeah, no. I, I wish I wish we did. Um, we do not have uh, we do not have any official, uh, you know, lead generation uh, type of program or database in place. You know, some of our some of the bigger brokers they do uh, they do have some kind of marketing personnel or, or people. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they'll use Sales Genie to send blast emails. You know, they'll 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 use it to, you know, to maybe pick out a demographic like we just said, you know, groups from 10 to 50, for example, in IT, average age 35 or 40, and they, they can do and they'll have one person designated to call those groups or send an email. But but typically no, we don't we don't have any uh, we don't have an, uh, a marketing function on the retail side. Uh, typically, that's you know relegated to our brokers' functions. Right, right. And and just for your own edification, URL does not offer group lead programs either. Um, we've looked into several, and none of them are really worth what you pay for the lead, um, in our opinion. So, I, I think uh, uh, I think. I think of just a, if I can elaborate a little bit on that, I think a real viable. I mean, because uh, because of the power now of of Google search and just the the web in, yeah. in general. I mean, if you just if you were just a Google like you know IT company zip code, you know, I would be surprised if you can get a lot of good just company listings and phone numbers right from that. And it's simply a matter of just calling the HR department or um, you know the benefits department, the group saying, hey. Just uh, I want to introduce myself. I'm a broker, and if you guys are getting frustrated with what's going on with the uh, health insurance, and you want to see some options, I can show you some neat stuff. And you'd be surprised how many people might say, "Hey, come on in." So uh, just a suggestion. But I know some of our brokers, uh, especially the ones that, you know, typically uh, there's only a handful of them, but typically use this self-funded product to generate their own new business, and this is how they did it. Right. Those are great suggestions. Um, hopefully, everyone will take advantage of that and uh, love the Google. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, you know, as we mentioned, too, with the 12-1 and the 1-1s, one um, you know, the, a lot of groups renew now in 12-1 12 12 or 1-1. One one. So even if they've just renewed, it's certainly to your advantage to get out and look at some of these technology companies or social media companies, et cetera, within your area and start cultivating those relationships to earn that business when they do renew. 
Um, Dwayne says, is this type of plan ACA compliant? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and on, then on the, the back end too, Dwayne, you know, a lot of the reasons for the popularity in these self-funded or level-funded plans is that a lot of some of the provisions within the Affordable Care Act don't have to be within within these these plans. So there's a little bit more flexibility. But yes, they right. are ACA compliant. And this is a great question. Mike asks, is there any assistance with the 1094-1095 reporting? Oh yeah, that is a great question. So um, and yes, so from feedback that I've gotten. Uh, Starmark is probably um, one of the, only, maybe the only, if not one of a few, um, that actually provides the information back to the group on the 1094-1095 reporting. Basically, we send them information. Uh, I, I think it's a form of a spreadsheet that almost looks like the 1095-B templates that, these, that needs to be filed. Um, so we send information back to the group so they can do their 1095-B uh, and 1095-B or 1095-C reporting to the government. We send that back to them to do. Now, uh, because this is all new, of course, a group may not understand exactly what to do there, but if they have any kind of, uh, if, they have a, if they use a payroll company, for example, um, they should be able to do that for them, you know, pretty easily without the blink of an eye. If they have to do it themselves manually, typically, you know, the groups um, are so small that they can literally probably write these things down themselves on the, on the actual 1095B forms and, and send them off to their employees. But like I said, from our experience, most all the groups have some kind of payroll services uh, company that's doing their payroll, and typically they can generate this for them. Now, with that said, uh, just as uh, just for my own curiosity, I also, and, and maybe Deb can share more about this, I, there's also a lot of companies now, and I, I found one where you just go into their website, and for a group of about uh, 20 or 30, they, you pretty much, you just upload your census to them, and then they generate the 1095Bs and do the filing with the government for you. For a group of 20, I think it's like a couple hundred dollars or less. It's really cheap. So they can do that for you if you don't want to do it on your own. There's a lot of companies that, that are doing that. It's pretty easy to do. You know, it's not, it's, not, it's not complicated. It's just different because no one's used to doing it. Right. Right. And um, we also have a solution through, uh, you know, the payroll component and through our private exchange <clears throat> with a monthly upload of some pretty basic information. Uh, the system, the BC Edge system that we have can monitor uh, the measurement periods and it does also spit out the 1094 and 1095. Uh, so a lot of options for you, but let's all just take a moment and cross our fingers and hope that that component <laughs> of the Affordable right. Care Act goes away, right? <laughs> yeah, right. That, you know, it's funny, that's, it's funny you said that because uh, that's, that's what I was thinking will we'll probably go first, but we'll see. Yeah, boy, I hope so. Yeah, I really. We never have to deal with measurement periods again. Yeah. <laughs> um, Austin asks a really great question. He says, what are the most common objections for ones not wanting this type of program? Um, the only, the only, I would, I, I, that's a, that is a great question. The only um, reason that we hear is basically, um, and again, or since the last uh, seven years uh, or eight years that we've introduced this thing, this has become less and less. The only objection really has not really been an objection. It's just been a fear. Basically, it's basically the fear of the customer doing something that sounds too good to be true and thinking outside the box. You know, it's, it's a matter of that, uh, overcoming that fear versus really an objection. So, and where that meets the broker is, the better the broker, and they've gotten much better at doing this. The, in the beginning, you know, a lot of groups were reluctant, and the broker himself didn't understand enough about the details to alleviate those fears and frustrations for the group, so they wouldn't sell. But today, a lot of brokers are really uh, swift and competent in explaining how this, so that fear element 
it's pretty much has virtually gone away. So there really isn't any objections to this anymore. Um, it's just really a matter of uh, if there's any customer that, uh, hey, how, this doesn't seem like, you know, this is too good to be true. It's just a matter of then of, of kind of going through the details with them and how it works and why, why it's completely uh, in their best interest to consider something for them if they qualify. They, you know, the caveat there, of course, is, you know, they need to be a relatively healthy group. Otherwise, they, they, you know, the plan won't work for them. So. Right. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, Kim says, can we get a printout of this information? And um, the answer is no, and I'm going to let Gino explain why. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. I, um, I can, I can, I, well, I, I have, uh, we, the reason why we can't send this out is because this is, uh, mark, our marketing department has a very strict um, uh, marketing um uh, philosophy, you know, they have to be all presentations and all basic entities uh, or product or marketing brochures that go out have to be uh, blessed off and certified by our marketing group. Uh, now, typically, I, that this particular presentation is not, was done by me, uh, just to relay the important salient points uh, of what our product is about to the group. So, and most of it's taken out of, you know, from different kinds of marketing pieces and brochures that we do have. Um, so I, that's why we can't share this. But uh, I do have a, a marketing brochure, and there's many actually that we can send. And after after a call, I can send um, Deb, uh, one of our the main, most popular marketing brochures, is basically how, how the self-funded works. It's a real nice, you know, I think it's two or three pages, and it kind of summarizes all the details I went with, went, went through with you on how this works and why it works and uh, some of the metrics involved. So I will, I can share that with you. I'll send over that marketing piece for you. And Deb, if that's okay, maybe you can just redistribute it after, uh, after you know, our call. So uh, at least we'll have that to refer back to. Does that sound okay? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And Steve says, can we, we can adjust our commissions to win cases? How does this work? You want to talk briefly sure. about that? Sure, absolutely. So, so we have a there is a there is a default commission that every quote goes out with, and um, sometimes you know from 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 working with other brokers uh, and, and and cases, our, our our rates come back very very strong. They're very they're, they're super compelling. So when those rates come back like that, before even we go to underwriting, we can simply you know make uh, a slight adjustment uh, and either to increase the rates. And then once that once that increased commission rates built in, um, ideally, you know, the expectation is that underwritten rates will come back still very favorably. So now you have a, a plan with little upside for the commission. Rates still look compelling, saving the group a lot of money, and that's how that's how we do that. We don't, you know, once once we present a group with a, with a rate after the underwriting is completed, then certainly it wouldn't make sense to, you know, unless unless you tell the unless you want to. Um, you know, for some reason, the rates uh, with the commission presented is not acceptable, and the group says you're a little bit too high. Then, of course, we can compromise those commissions and go down. You know, the group's blessing, of course, would be there for that. But um, yeah, we can build in some extra commission up front, uh, even before, the, even. And actually, let me just rephrase that. So when you send a quote in uh, and you see the base rates, even before you present those base rates to the group. Right, you can come back to URL and say, "Hey, look! Before I present these base rates, even way before the underwriting, we can say, can you build? Let's build a little bit more commission because these rates are really compelling. Let's build a little commission even in the base rate. So let's make it higher. Let's go from X to X plus five percent. So we can do that even before you present anything to the group, which is probably the way to do it. So, so that's how that would work. Okay, and remember, Steve, that the the commissions are built into the rate. So if you bump up your commission, the rates bump up. If you exactly. bump down your commission, the rates bump down. Um, Tom has a question for me. Can a company change group health insurance at any time? And absolutely, Tom. Uh, groups are not subject to um, you know annual enrollment periods set by the government or anyone else. The only downside from that is that if they're currently on a 12-1 renewal and they go several months. I'm sure some folks have met some of their deductible, if not all of their deductible. So that would be the only downside to writing a group off renewal cycle. And um, Dwayne has a question, which I will take to you privately. Um, it's really about uh, referrals and endorsements. So okay. um, that one I will take to you privately. And Dwayne, I'll get back to you on that. Um, 
But that looks like all of the questions. We, were, we did a good job of keeping it to just about an hour. Um, so as, as I mentioned earlier, please check out our website. Call us with any questions. We're certainly happy to help. Let's go get those opportunities and start quoting them. There's no cost in quoting, um, just time. And uh, even use it as a learning, learning tool. Quote a group and we can go line by line through the, the quotes and help you really fully understand these, these uh, self-funded and, and level-funded programs. Uh, so that's it. That uh, brings us to the conclusion. Gino, I really thank you for your time. I look forward to getting you a lot of groups to send to your underwriters, and hopefully we can uh, earn some business here. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.